Hello all, Stephen Elliott of CoherentBreathing.com. On March 24th of this year, I had the opportunity uh, to interview with Jessica Dibb of Shift Network. This in the context of the Breathwork Summit, which was to air the next week. My presentation was titled, The Breathing Imperative, Coherent Breathing, Circulation, Brain Waves, and Consciousness. During the course of the interview, a few of the questions uh, arose that could use a bit more explanation. So I thought I would take the next few YouTube posts to address some of these points in more detail. The first one I'd like to address is my mantra that breathing is a circulatory function. You may ra raise your eyebrows and say, of course it is. But here I refer to emphasis. The popular understanding is that breathing is a gas exchange function, where again, you might say, well, of course it is. But it, here its circulatory significance goes unnoticed. Uh, I posit that this is a strategic mistake regarding a comprehensive understanding of circulatory physiology and of breathing. And I propose that for purposes of understanding coherent breathing, what it is, how we practice, why we practice, etc., that we are deliberate in flipping this emphasis. This understanding, again, is foundational regarding coherent breathing and undertaking the practice thereof. Now, this is not speculation. It is fact that has been understood for well over a thousand years, dating all the way back to China's Yellow Emperor. A simple proof is exercise. If breathing did not aid in circulation, then we could neither exercise or work hard physically. This is because work requires cellular energy production, and energy production requires increased fluid flow uh, to the cells of the body where increased fluid flow requires increased blood flow. Instrumentally, the relationship between breathing and blood flow dates back to the mid-1800s. With the advent of clever mechanical instruments that were able to observe both blood pressure and heartbeat rate in relation to breathing. The German physiologist Carl Ludwig is credited with the first actual physical recording of the phenomenon called respiratory sinus arrhythmia around 1850. RSA refers to an arrhythmia or change in the heartbeat rate as a consequence of respiration. Here, arrhythmia connotes an anomaly, where in fact today we understand that the anomaly is if the, heart, the heartbeat rate does not change when we breathe, as this can be a sign of dysautonomia for many reasons. Anyway, the principle of RSA says that heartbeat rate speeds up when we inhale, and 
heartbeat rate slows down when we exhale. This speeding up and slowing down is generally recognized to be a function of breathing induced changes in blood volume and pressure in the heart and arterial tree that are detected by baroreceptors, specialized neurons that feed back real-time pressure to the autonomic nervous system for purposes of closed loop control of blood flow and pressure, keeping blood pressure within viable limits. Both um, for purposes of the circulatory system and to maintain viable flow throughout the body to all the cells estimated at roughly 100 trillion in number. These changes accrue from the large volume of blood stored by the lungs during inhalation, the lungs ejecting that same volume of blood during exhalation. We can think of exhalation as being associated with the left heart and arterial flow and inhalation being associated with the right heart and venous flow, noting that blood is moving through the lungs all the time. In fact, a goal of coherent breathing is to keep blood flowing unimpeded in a circle all the time, circumstances permitting, where the diaphragm is the primary mediator of this flow. Heart rate variability, or HRV, came along in the 1960s with the advent of the computer and specifically the ability to perform Fourier analysis on the time domain heartbeat signal, thereby providing a, a spectral analysis of the frequencies that make up the time domain series of the heartbeat signal. This proved to be a major step forward in the field of cardiology and of medicine in general, in that now the temporal can also be analyzed spectrally in frequency terms. With this, the field of HRV was born where HRV took on the broader scientific scope of variation in the heartbeat rate for any and all reasons. This being said, because RSA is the predominant determinant of variation in heart rate, it was filtered out by many um, HRV instruments as it was considered unwanted physiologic noise that preempted uh, the visibility of lower threshold signals having to do with subtle autonomic nervous system control. Without the presence of RSA, these phenomena could then be detected and analyzed much more accurately. It is interesting to note that the exact same thing happened with EEG early on in its evolution, where low frequency filtering was installed to eliminate the overriding signal strength of the respiratory waves in the brain. This next chart titled the Valsalva wave is an actual recording of blood volume at my right earlobe when breathing with coherence respire one vocal instructive sequence. The primary uh, flagship training CD for coherent breathing since the beginning. 
here we can see two major things going on. There is a large, slow respiratory wave beneath and a faster heartbeat riding atop. Note that the heartbeat speeds up when the respiratory wave falls during inhalation and slows down when the respiratory wave rises during exhalation. We can also see that the ejection fraction, what I like to refer to as bucket size, um, changes in accordance with the rise and fall of the respiratory wave, where the ejection fraction decreases when the wave falls during inhalation and increases as the respiratory wave rises during exhalation. This allows the left heart to shuttle the large volume of blood exiting the lungs uh, through the left heart and into the arterial tree. This third chart, the simultaneous signals view offered by Coherence Valsalva Way Pro picks these two phenomena apart. Uh, the red line being the Valsalva wave rising and falling, that is the blood wave associated with breathing, and the blue line being the heartbeat rate falling and rising as a consequence. Note the phase relationship of the two, nominally 180 degrees out of phase, uh, the definition of resonance proper, where we see the resonance curve, the lower panel, which demonstrates the correlation coefficient between the red and blue lines above approaching minus one, meaning that they are um, approaching perfect 180 degree uh, asymmetry. This concludes my discussion of the point that breathing is a circulatory function. We hope you find it of value. Thank you.